Well then, Bunny Little. Yes. FYI, FYI, that nickname was written by 12-year-old Isabella Galindo for the podcast. Yes. Well then, Bunny Little. I would now like to introduce a new occasionally appearing segment here on the Pope on Film podcast. It's a new segment that I would like to call the Mandela Effect. Uh, I, I already fucked it up. Mandela Effect Moments in Music History. This segment, this new segment was originally going to be entitled Strange Moments in Musical History, but I changed it. Cool. I changed it. Are you talking crap about me? I cha- what, what, Bella? What are you talking about? Uh, no, uh, I mentioned Bunny Little. You wrote that nickname. Yeah. The show. We, we were not talking crap about you, but we can. Yeah. We can talk crap about you now if yes. that's what you want. Mm. Yeah, Man, that Bella. Uh, <laughs> crap, 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 crap. <laughs> Crap, 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 crap. Crap, crap, crap. Crap, 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 crap. Crap on a stick. Crapitude. Crapalicious. You know, what, Bella? you know what, Bella? You should go to Reno. You should go to Reno, Nevada. You know what you should do there? You should find a cheap hotel. Maybe uh, spend a weekend there. They have some really nice museums. Maybe you can hit a casino. You know what you should play there? Craps! <laughs> That's what you should do. You should play some craps while you're there at Reno. Craps. So, so this has been a topic that I've been extremely passionate about recently. Basically, my entire family has heard me rant and rave about this topic over the last few weeks. Isabella nice. specifically. Bella was the what? first person that I that I tried this on. But essentially, this is what it boils down to. I fully believe that I am actually somehow stuck in the wrong dimension, and the proof of this is hidden in popular American music. Okay. So, uh, uh, basically, we'll need to get into a little bit. We'll need to get into what is called the Mandela Effect. So, Bunny, in the easier said than done department, can you please explain to the listeners, if you will, uh, what the Mandela Effect basically is? The large, and- the large Hadron Collider has and this was intentional by the scientists this is what it was all secretly about the whole time uh was to merge us with another universe universe x um so we universe prime i guess i don't know and universe x has merged which causes people to have really shitty memories Okay. That's basically it. Okay. So, so I honestly believe that I am somehow stuck in a dimension that is not entirely my own. Most of this dimension is the same. I still work at a bookstore. I still do story time. Yes. I still have uh, a nice member. Mm-hmm. Ship card to Costco. So I can get things cheap with my nice penis. And, you know, everything is the same. Um, But some things, some tiny details of this dimension are just slightly askew. Yeah. Just the littlest bit askew. Mm -hmm. You might think, oh, this is just regular skew but then you go oh it's slightly askew <laughs> just ever so slightly askew but only for me and and not for the majority of america now don't ma- don't ask me how or yeah. why i got stuck here i don't know how uh, myself i don't know how this happened um i'm assuming that it is due to a lot of astro technical stuff and the alignment of stars with the moon in conjunction with extreme climate change and the holes in the ozone layer but anyway yeah the key to the proof of the mandela effect is in popular music bunny popular music it's all there yes all the signs that's the key the key is in popular music 
So let's well, take... Well, I, I, I do have a theory of how you got here. Okay. okay. What's your theory as to how I got here? Well, merging two universes together would would cause a lot of activity, cause a lot of energy in both universes that would most likely destroy both universes. So I'm thinking that to keep the equilibrium, it had to like use up that energy by ripping a very small hole, just enough to use up that energy into yet another universe. But the hole was only big enough for one person. Basically, you just described what Marvel Comics did with the Ultimate Universe. Oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. Both of the universes collided, and then Doctor Doom was a god for a while, and now, you know, there are some people from one dimension and some people from the other dimension, and they're all in just the the, the main Marvel Universe. Oh, Except okay. Spider-Man. Now they're Spider-Man and uh, Black Spider-Man, and they're together. So both of the Spider-Men are living together. So what this segment, Mandela Effect Moments in in Music History, hopes to do is to put a spotlight on some of those moments in modern American history in which the Mandela Effect is in full effect. So let's take a look. At one fine example of the Mandela effect in popular music. I'm starting off this the way that I love starting off things. If you're a a regular lover of the podcast, then you have heard me say something like this many, many times recently. But the year was 1998, Bunny. Yes. It was a year of change. Yes, it was. Um, People Magazine, this is true. This is a true story. In the year 1998, People Magazine said, you know what? We're always having voting on the most beautiful people list, our our sexiest people alive, that, that, that sexual harassment of celebrities issue where we talk about who's sexy. Uh, We always do voting on that. How about this? You know this internet thing, which is kind of popular right now? (laughs) How about we let people on the internet vote for who's the most beautiful people? And everyone said, what? That's never happened before. Voting on the internet? Well, I guess this this would be the first time ever that that, uh, someone has done this. Uh, Yeah, let's go for it. I foresee nothing wrong happening. (laughs) <laughs> what could go wrong with voting for something on the internet? Okay. So this was the first time, it, it, historic, it was the first time that people on the internet went just type, 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 typey, typey, typey. Wait a second. I think we can fuck with this. Yes. So... Literal, true, the number one choice for the most beautiful people list in 1998, the number one pick was Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf from the Howard Stern Show. (laughs) You know who number two is? No. (laughs) Ric Flair! Nice! And number three was Leonardo DiCaprio. You wouldn't believe who they gave the cover to. The person in third place is who? Oh, Leo, Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio was voted. I was hoping was for the door. Announced as as the most beautiful person in 1998's People magazine, totally screwing Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf and. <laughs> Woo! Which I think is just rude. Mm-hmm. Which I think is just rude. Ric Flair deserves a chance, damn it. Well, when did Titanic come out? It was right around there somewhere, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, was it was right around there. It was right around there, somewhere around there. But still, 
damn it. <laughs> and Hank, the young, angry, drunken dwarf, deserve a chance. Yes, they do. In 1998, all everyone was talking about was, of course, President Bill Clinton's torrid sex affair with White House intern Misha Collins. Yes. That was the only thing that anyone was talking about. What? Bill Clinton had an affair with an intern who would soon play the part of Castiel on Supernatural? Yes. What? That's all anybody talked about. To be fair, though, Misha Collins is a sexy man. (laughs) <laughs> no, he was wearing that blue dress. He was, you know, I don't want to say he was asking for it, but <laughs> you know, I think I think there's uh people to blame on both sides. Yes. Yes. On both sides. I mean, you got to admit at least that it was really not professional attire. No, it was not. Yes. It was not. It was not. Also, in 1998, Carmen Electra married boyfriend Dennis Rodman, and theirs was a love that lasted forever. (laughs) And by forever, I mean nine days. Nice. Nine days. In the year 1998... Did Kim Kardashian beat that? Probably. I think she did. Probably. Yeah. In the year 1998, Leonard Nimoy was alive. Yes. And he agreed to appear in a Y2K documentary for a bizarre reason. You wouldn't believe this. People thought he was nuts. But Leonard Nimoy specifically said, <laughs> I will only agree to be in this documentary if a stoned man and a long-haired Mexican would one day make fun of it in the future. Yes. <laughs> so, you're welcome. <laughs> Tip of the hat to you. Uh-huh. You're welcome. You're welcome, in, Lenny. Yeah. In 1998, the number one TV show was, of course... CBS is molested by an angel. (laughs) CBS is gritty show sexually molested by an angel. Yes. Oh, no, I need help. If only an angel would show up and the angel shows up and goes, hey, nice ass. Hmm. Why don't you turn that around? Let me get a look from the back. Oh. Just kidding. It was ER. In the year... (laughs) 1990. I was surprised that in the year 1998, ER was more popular than Seinfeld or Friends. Really? Like when you look at the ratings and the popularity, it's ER and then Friends and then Seinfeld. Well, how come I don't see ER Trivial Pursuit? How come I don't see people dressing up as, I don't know, Dr. Green for Halloween? How come... ER doesn't have, like, the intense love that people have for both of those other shows. Yes. You know, it's weird. It's weird. Fucking George Clooney! Anyway. (laughs) In the year 1998, as everybody knows, my niece Deanna Burkett was born. That is literally what everyone told me I needed to put in this podcast. And I did. (laughs) I said, honey, I'm working on a bit here. Tell me something that happened in 1998. She goes, well, Deanna was born. Why don't you put Deanna in there? And I go, maybe I will, but I totally (laughs) won't. And then like the next day, oh, hey, Deanna, um, what happened in 1998? Well, I was born. (laughs) Like, okay, God damn it. Stop breathing on my ball sack. I'll put you in it. Jesus. (laughs) Also, in 1998, one of the hottest musicians in the world was rapper Jay-Z. Do you know what Jay-Z's real name is, Bunny? No. Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. Yes, that is weird. Yeah. Uh, Jay-Z was a pretty big deal at the time, but he wasn't the Jay-Z yet because he hadn't had a big hit, a breakout hit yet. 
yeah. had one song that put him over the top. So he deliberated. He deliberated. He uh, locked himself up in his laboratory and he worked feverishly hard trying to think of what his next hardcore gangster rap song should be. Then he had an idea. He said, oh, man, I figured it out. I figured out what my next song is going to be. Yeah. This is going to be huge. This is going to be my biggest song. Man, I was trying to think, you know, because I'm from the streets. Yes. I used to deal drugs. I used to have a gun. I used to be hardcore. Now I'm spitting rhymes, but my rhymes need to be from the streets, need to be from the ghetto. And you know what the most ghetto thing is in the world? What's the most hardcore thing? What's the most hardcore gangster rap thing imaginable? Of course, you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. I am. Little Orphan Annie. Yeah. Of course, nothing is more gangster than the musical Annie. That's mm. what I'm going to do. My next song is going to heavily sample a song from Annie, the musical. <laughs> So anyway, I've been working on a few songs. What do you think about this song? Uh, yeah. What? Who? Ha ha. The sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> Bet your bottom dollar, bitch. Until tomorrow, ho. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. I love you, bitch, tomorrow. Okay, well, maybe that's not, maybe that's not, like, the most hardcore song. Maybe yeah. I need to do another song. Oh, I know. What about the first song from the musical with a bunch of poor ass orphans and shit? <laughs> so he wrote the song Hard Knock Life. Big hit, massive hit, huge, huge, massive hit for Jay Z. He samples a song. From Annie. <laughs> and, and the beat, the beat is from Annie. The lyrics are from Annie. Not only that, he samples the song itself. The <laughs> chorus is just the chorus of Hard Knock Life. And it's a song, and it's from the musical Annie. <laughs> and it was a huge hit. It played all over the place. It was on the radio. The video was number one on TRL, which I'm assuming was yeah. still a thing back then. So everybody, everybody loved this song. Loved this song. So are we possibly thinking in your universe, Annie didn't exist and Jay-Z is a musical genius? No, we are to exist. We, we are to believe that Jay-Z just wrote a hardcore gangster song that didn't involve a kid's musical. <laughs> and since you said that 1998 was, was um, before he was really Jay-Z, was he just Jay's then, I wonder? Like, like the continent of Pangaea, the, the Z had not broken off and separated yet? He was still very serious back then. He hadn't let loose, so his name was Jefferson Z. Oh, I see. He hadn't shortened it yet. I believe it was Jeffrey Z, actually. Yeah. Was his full name. And and uh, to go back to a very, very, very earlier episode, in my mind, still, if I close my eyes and think Jay-Z, I think of that white guy who used to be on SNL. Remember they did that it, they did that funny skit, the Jay-Z story, starring Mike O'Brien as Jay-Z. Oh, okay. Yes. Drugs. Does anybody want some drugs? I'm Jay-Z. Yeah. I, I, I my 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 brain immediately flashed to what do you mean? Everybody except the token black guy? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that shit. Jay Z sampled. Jay Z wrote a song based on the musical Annie. That shit was a top twenty hit in the U.S. It chopped the charts. It topped the charts 
all across the globe, and somehow everyone else was fine with this. <laughs> That's the kicker. That's the kicker. Somehow everyone's like, oh man, I love that song, Hard Knock Life. It's Hard Knock Life for us. It's like, do none of you see this? Do none of you? How is everyone okay with this? Yeah. Yeah. America's biggest rap artist samples Little Orphan Annie, and we're all supposed to be okay with this? Was was that before or after Austin Powers did it? Austin Powers? What are you talking about? Um, in, in one of the Austin Power movies, uh, Dr. Evil had done uh, It's a Hard Knock Life as a rap song. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it, it must have been, uh, this song must have been before. He was probably referencing that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I only remember the first Austin Powers movie. I saw all three of them. But yeah. the first film was actually a really good parody of James Bond films and films from the 60s and Casino yeah. Royale. And the film was very it, silent. There's a lot of silent scenes where 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 it, things are a bit quiet and go on for longer than than usual. And, and, and the film is allowed to kind of grow as a as a good parody. The second and third ones, though, were just way too loud, and they shoved too much into it, and, yeah. and it's just... Uh, Maxwell. Maxwell. A little bit. But, yeah, no, I love the first film. The first film was freaking wonderful. I hate all the others. <laughs> hate all the other freaking movies. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's... So that's that's our first Mandela effect moment in music history. I have others, so many others. Really? Okay. So many other uh, uh, massive popular songs in in American history that I am not okay with. How did a major rap star sample Little Orphan Annie, and everyone loves it. I played the song to Bella, and Bella might be in our universe because she had never heard the song before, and I played it, and she goes, well, that's stupid. And I'm like, yes, that is stupid, but that was a huge hit. This was a huge hit. Jay-Z sampled Annie, and everyone loved it. Yeah. Freaking ridiculous. It's a you don't see You don't see, like, Will Smith... This is my new song. It's called Grease. It's the word. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Or like something today, like like uh, Chance the Rapper's new song, Let It Go. <laughs> you know? Anyway, next week we're going to have another Mandela Effect moment in music history. Um, uh, thank you for, for hearing me out there, buddy. Oh, thank no problem. I'm very, very upset. I, I will be looking forward so, to more. I, you, you know I love the Mandela Effect. Yes, yes, I know you do. I know you do. 